Welcome back, everybody. No beer this time. I uh, went out into the world. I braved the world and picked up a cherry Coke. It's probably my favorite soda. So uh, today we're going to be doing a rod build, if you couldn't tell from the thumbnail and the title of the video. Surprise, we're doing a rod build. Um, so I recently just got three new blanks in from Mudhole. Uh, three completely different things. I'm building a big, huge spinning rod for my dad. It's basically, I think it's like a 7.6 broomstick flipping rod, essentially, that, that I'm going to make into a spinning rod for him. Um, a cranking rod for me, which we're doing today. It's a beautiful, like, sea foam green. I think it's going to look nice. And, uh, and then for Simple Jack, he is a huge fan of the old school carrot stick rods. You know, we've all seen the carrot stick rods. You know, the orange blanks with all black grips and, uh, and red um red uh thread thread wrap um so we're going to be doing a video on throwing it back building an old school carrot stick and um hopefully he's going to get up with me to do that things are a little weird with the coronavirus um you know we're trying to it sounds awful but we're, we're trying to avoid our friends unfortunately um so i hope everybody's being safe but we're going to get together and do that Hopefully there's not too much laundry noise. Apparently you guys can't hear it all that well, which I'm really glad to know because it drives me insane. So um, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so here's what we're working with today. Here's the blank, a beautiful like seafoam green, um, all blacked out with wind grips. This is a CRB G2 uh, real seat, I believe is what it's called. So here's the blank right here. I've already reamed out the uh, grips just to kind of save that off camera let's see cb oop, oop, cb which is a cranking rod cb 905 mhx and then c i guess is for seafoam um, so like i said i skipped the step reaming out the uh the the grips and everything because i'm waiting on a new set of these these are the ones that came with the kit and they're hollow and they're not really meant for the drill and as you can see um, my drill really messed that thing up. So I'm basically, uh, got the, uh, the, the like super reamers or whatever they're called. Um, so we'll be able to, uh, ream them out much quicker going forward. And, um, yeah, so you can see that doesn't quite slide up all the way. So we're going to trim that a little bit. Again, this is a different reel seat than the Fuji seats that I've been using before. This is a rod I completely pieced together as are um, the other ones that we're gonna do. So um, <clears throat> anyway, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get our pro pace mixed up. I'm gonna cut that down to size first. Um, actually, yeah, so I'm gonna do that first. Then we're gonna mark where everything's gonna go. Um, and then we'll do our pro paste and then we'll get all this set. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. So I'm excited about this one. I've needed a cranking rod to replace my piece of crap one for a long time and um, Hopefully this will be it. Okay, so as we can see, um, this particular reel seat here, um, I, I love the wind grips. You can see it it kind of doesn't really fit that, uh, that part right there is too long. I forget the name of this part. Ah, I forget, it's on the tip of my tongue. This part that sticks out has its own name. So I'm just going to trim it, really, um, with this razor blade, I'm trying to figure out how's how to get that on how to get that on camera well um, but basically I'm just going to trim it down some and then kind of go from there and uh, see how much more I need to trim I'm sure I'll need to trim a little bit more but basically that's what I'm doing that way it'll sit more flush with that if that makes sense so it looks like I need to trim a little bit more so we're just gonna take it easy. And really, you could trim the whole thing off and just flush it up on, on the blank, and it's really not gonna make a difference. Um, but if you can do it, do a better job than that, why not, you know? If you're going to the trouble to do this at all. Hey, look at that, there you go. And that's what you wanna see on your blank is a nice kind of merge with that. Um, so. Anyway, if you run into that problem, you know, because all real seats are different and 
they don't always line up and fit perfectly with each style of grip. Um, you know, those are things that you can at call mud hole and ask whenever you make your order. I had to call and ask a bunch of questions um, and, and still didn't get everything right. Some of the guides, um, the tip top on my guides were the wrong size. Not that they won't fit on the rod. They're just bigger than what I wanted. So, you know, growing pains. Um, but, you know, you can always call them and ask questions. Uh, and I would advise you to do so. Um, so anyway, we kind of have everything ready now. So we're going to put it back on mark where everything needs to go uh, in terms of the um, grips here and uh, and then we'll put them on all right so now i have everything marked and this particular seat has an insert in it so <clears throat> basically once i epoxy that down i then epoxy this insert and then slide my trigger over the insert um, it that just kind of dresses this up a little bit and it kind of acts as an arbor to kind of bridge the spacing gap in there. Um, so really cool there. I, I would rather just see the blank under it, um, but this one's a little big and you know, why build tape arbors when I have something like that? Um, so that's a kind of kind of a neat feature there. So anyway, we're gonna start um, by uh, epoxying the butt cap. All right, so like last time, we're gonna take some uh, pro paste and actually put it down in there because this this fits pretty tight on the blank and this way I know that there's epoxy in the back of it it's not just uh, it's not just gonna push it out the top so to speak so let's go ahead and yeah yeah boy that's a that's a tight fit on this one this time but there's nothing wrong with that back it up a little bit yeah you can see how tight it is it hardly left any epoxy residue on the uh, actual rod there so we're just gonna add a little more there and put a little bit on the rod and then we should be good to go as far as epoxying the butt cap okay next we're gonna epoxy um, oops, the blank above this for the uh, grip there. My parents just got here, so I gotta go say hello to my folks. They're bringing us supplies because it's hard to find toilet paper and stuff right now, if you can believe that, which I'm sure you can because you read the news. So, anyways, we're gonna try that. Yeah, boy, tight fitting today. It kind of takes all the epoxy off <laughs> which you don't want necessarily you want it to be everywhere in fact I'll probably have to mix up a little bit more pro paste here but anyway as you can see plenty of epoxy there all right and now we're gonna epoxy the blank down here for our insert I am really excited for this rod. I don't throw crankbaits like a whole ton. Uh, you know, just this is Florida. We're usually fishing some sort of grass or something like that. Um, but when I do, I enjoy it. All right, and now we're gonna put the rest of this epoxy, just what I can get, uh, all over the top of this thing. So that section right there basically becomes my blank now right here for this part all right then slide that over mm. then we should be good that's about to drip. Oh, y'all saw that? Spine time. Look at that. We're already on spine. Heck yeah. Like, I'm not even touching that. That's beautiful, guys. Gonna try, just test it one more time. Oh, yeah. I will take it. All right, so we have everything uh, ready to uh, kind of start the guides. So here are the guides right there. Those are some CRB guides. 
in like a uh, silver polish. Um, I have some other sets in gunmetal and then uh, black, of course. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to take our tubing here and uh, we're going to go ahead and set the guides, um, space them just kind of how, however I want. That's the beauty of rod building. Um, so I'm going to use all 12 guides plus a tip top plus a hook keep. Uh, so there's going to be quite a few things to wrap. But, you know, the, the more guides, the better, because that's more surface that the line is in contact with. You know, if you think about if you have eight guides versus 12 guides, well, 12 guides, that's 12 surfaces that the line is touching. I just think you're going to get a little bit more sensitivity out of that um, than, as opposed to less surface. Um, so we're going to load this thing up with guides. The last two builds I did all had 13 guides total. <clears throat> um, this one will be no different. So I think what I'm going to do is wrap it in black thread here with maybe some metallic blue um, trim bands and, uh, and see how that looks. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get the guides ready, um, placed, and then we'll start wrapping. So right there you can see that those uh, rubber bands, they basically give you these rubber tubes. You just cut them, and that's how you put your guides on for the time being to, uh, to space them without doing anything permanent. So that's uh, what it looks like there. And uh, I'm having focus trouble, so we're going to uh, go back to the table. All right, so getting this guide started here. And again, this is absolutely teeny tiny thread. Smaller than the thread that I was using in my previous rod builds. So this is going to be quite a challenge for me, for sure. And you can already see. I'm not wrapping this as cleanly as size D thread. This is size A and it is absolutely tiny. All right, we're actually able to make a little bit of progress here. So I'm able to kind of, able to kind of wrap this a little faster while still, uh, while still being, being pretty clean here. So just need to keep Keep packing it tight, and uh, and then we'll go ahead and finish this half up. Start on that other half, and then we are going to put on a trim band um, for this front guide. All right, so I have both sides wrapped, and I'm just adding a little kind of metallic blue trim band here to kind of butt up against the uh, black. So we're going to go ahead and and uh, attempt to finish this out. There we go. Here we go. So just a nice little trim band there. And um, yeah, we are gonna move on to the next guides. <clears throat> um, and, uh, and then we'll, you know what? I might just go ahead and put the logo sticker on and do all the wraps down there by the trigger. Yeah, we might do that next. Not sure. Okay, so I've taken some black thread and I've literally just laid it under there and I'm just getting it started. We're gonna try to do some sort of a little inlay here. And uh, so what I wanna do is I now wanna cut my black thread and I'm basically going to Hold those together like that, and then wrap both, just like that. I have no idea what this is called or how you're really supposed to do it, but maybe it'll look interesting, who knows. I've done a spiral inlay before. But I don't want to try to do that until I'm working with a little bit bigger thread again. This stuff is absolutely tiny. I don't know, something like that. 
once I clean it up, it might look kind of neat. So anyway, we're going to keep doing that and see if it works. If it doesn't work, I'll uh, have to do something else. All right, sticker time. Have to make sure this is lined up right. Mmm, a little off. Yeah, that's looking about right. Have to make sure the rod's facing up for one. And make sure that it's even. Number two, yes. I'm a, I'm a total geek here for this. This is my favorite part. Being able to brand my own rod. So, pretty cool. Now comes the hard wrap on this side. So I will meet you back when I've got a handle on that. All right, so we're working on this um, hook keep there. So simple as that. That's the way I like to put them on, kind of to the left. So now the rod is facing up. I like it. I like my hook keeps off to the left a little bit. Let's straighten that out, but. Yeah, basically we're just going to wrap this and, um, and then we're going to uh, start that inlay. But for right now, we're just going to get the hook keep on and, uh, and then we'll kind of worry about the inlay later once all of this is looking good. But that's the plan is to kind of have equal sides here on opposite sides of the sticker. Well, we actually got the uh, the little inlay part cleaner than on the uh, first one. However, I actually put too much blue, so they're not exactly even. Um, so a little bit of a uh, beginner's error there. But we're going to try and uh, go ahead and finish this out and uh, get started on the guides because I don't want to be out here all night. So... We're just going to kind of really try to finish out this wrap. Basically, you just cut that tag end off. You can see the black thread under there. And you just wrap right over it. Nobody's the wiser. So, in the event, we're going to kind of even out these sides. And, uh, yeah, a bit of a challenge. You know, I'm, I'm still really new to this, but I'm having fun learning. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting... I'm getting results that are good enough for me, and that is very satisfying. So, um, yeah, in fact, I better go ahead and uh, get my loop in there. All right, so gotten a few guides done there. So there's one of them right there. This one right here is still a work in progress. But uh, I'm <clears throat> getting them pretty clean. So uh, I'm there again. I'm... Really happy with the way the rod's coming out. I wish I could have wrapped a little cleaner around that hook keep. I seem to have trouble with hook keeps, um, but practice makes perfect. So I'm um, going to keep keep running these guys, but wanted to uh, kind of show y'all the most recent one there. So, yeah, going on nice and smooth. So, oh, there goes the telephone. All right, well, um, we have it on the uh, rotator here, that thingy. And all of the guides are wrapped. Sorry, it's getting a little uh, dark over that side. And uh, now we're going to mix up our finishing epoxy. And uh, that's the last step. We'll take this thing down to the pond tomorrow and make a few casts with it. And uh, see how this thing does. Alright, and here is the finishing epoxy. And uh, again, if you're new to rod building, um, <clears throat> you have to be really precise with this stuff. So you can see it's at the six. I'm gonna take it to the four, exactly. I wanna be very precise here. Because these have to be very even. All right, so there's part A and part B. Again, six to the four. 
And that should do it for this rod. You know, you can always mix up more if you need it. And uh, again, you need to mix this stuff up really, really good. And uh, you will get bubbles in it. But as you're applying your epoxy, you can uh, use the heat gun. So heat gun's a big part of soft plastic bait making and comes in handy here. All right, so just gonna dip our brush in the epoxy and just let the rotation get it on there nice and smooth. And you can put a coat on, then put another coat on, just however much you want. So, like I've said in previous videos, everything that has thread gets the epoxy. It's this good finishing epoxy. You, know, you just kind of let it spread itself out, get a little more. I'm going to cover all the threads and then kind of get outside the thread a little bit. Just like every other part of rod building, can't be in a hurry. This is a game of patience but very, very rewarding. Very rewarding. So anyway, this is the deal right here. We're gonna do this for the next while. Get this whole thing covered. And uh, then we're gonna sign off for the night. All right, everybody, she is done. So yeah, this is the rod. So, She'll be out here spinning all night like a rotisserie chicken. And uh, we will meet you back tomorrow and uh, go make a cast with it. All right, guys, here it is. We are down at a little pond. Uh, there's actually a lot of fish in here. Never caught a big one, but we'll see. Maybe we'll get a bite. But the point is to make a few casts with our new rod that 10 hours ago didn't even have epoxy on the threads. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah, really, really awesome action here. This is a subscriber sent square bill. So it runs about three feet, which is about right for here. So uh, we're gonna keep making a few casts, see if we can get one. All right, well, that pond really sucks, I guess. About two years ago, Simple Jack and I went there and caught a ton of fish. So I don't know what was going on there. There were beds everywhere. Uh, they were empty beds, but something had to make those beds. There's gotta be a fish in there somewhere. But uh, yeah, I love, I love how this crankbait kind of matches the rod. I didn't really even think about that. But uh, anyway, that's it right there. Um, let me show you something cool here. A subscriber, you guys are the best, sent me these awesome color shift powders. I don't know the brand, um, but thank you, sir, who sent these to me. I cannot remember your name right now. Um, but that is a ton of money in color shift powder. I mean, you know, some of this stuff can be $20 a gram, and those are, those are pretty good size. Speaking of color shift, let me show you a few baits that I made earlier. Yeah, so you may have seen these on Instagram. Um, these are already all sold, but uh, I made some, uh, some, some rainbow trout skin pours there. Really pretty natural trout. Um, the star of the show is the green color shift shads. So those right there. Did a recent video on those. And, um, and then I did sort of like a, a blueback skin pour color there. So... Um, 
I've uh, since I've been working at home and not at my normal office, I don't have access to a printer right now. So anyone that's been waiting on baits, um, if they haven't shipped yet, it's because I'm trying to figure out uh, how to print shipping labels from home. My wife has a printer. I haven't been able to get it work yet. There goes the dang washer. Okay, well, there it is one more time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please shoot me lots of comments below. Let me know what you think. The rod absolutely felt great. Um, it is perfect for these square bills and rattle traps. I don't know if I'd throw like a 6XD on there. I'm sure I could get away with it. I'd probably want something a little firmer, but this right here is exactly what I wanted. So um, if you're interested in building a uh, crankbait rod for yourself, definitely check out that blank. Um, I, uh, I'm very pleased with it. So we will catch you guys next time. Everybody be safe out there.